This video is brought to you by T-Blocks. Enjoy the content now, but stay for the shilling later. Welcome to Lobster Magnet and Friends. I'm here with my buddy, Goro Gregoro. That's me, and that's Lobster. And uh, we are really, really, really late with this, but, you know, life happens, but life finds a way. And we are here <laughs> to talk about the final two episodes of Inu Yashiki. Yeah, um, I gotta say, this is kind of like... It really does feel like it ended abruptly. Well, um, l l let's get go to the episode 10 before we start talking about the end. W what do you think, like... I, I had a little conflicted feelings about that because, like, it was like the big epic finale between Inu Yashiki versus uh, Shishigami in their mm -hmm. final superhero off. But like, it starts off really weirdly where they play like the the comic music when he's like saving the planes. Oh God, yeah, that and, and music choice is so weird. That, that was like such a bad choice. Oh, oh <laughs> man! Even though it's supposed to be like this badass hero moment, this sort of like, yeah, save lives, people. Woo, hell yeah, go go get him, old man. It's supposed to be this, you know, F yeah, sa go salary man scene. Then it's just sort of like, oh, oh that kooky grandpa saving those planes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, foiling Shishigami's plans again. It's like, I I don't know how to characterize that music. It's just, it, it felt like some kind of goofy, like, old timey music it, it did not like a fit, car, old cartoon or it something. did not fit the sequence it did not fit the scenario at all it was definitely a weird bizarre choice that I, I don't agree with and i don't think you know made things any better no it really didn't um so and then there was, of course, like the overuse of CGI when they're doing the flight scene. It's like, oh, yeah, this PS2 game is looks awesome. It wasn't exactly overuse of it. It was just like really under budgeted, I think. Or yeah, the, something uh, happened with the production. Like something happened in that production cycle of this of this episode that went horribly wrong. And they had to like. Make do with like PS2 graphics. Or yeah, because like the, the, those backgrounds look pretty freaking terrible. That, that was like I was kind of groaning. It's like, oh come on, this is supposed not, to be the coolest the, moment. Why? Why does it look only, like? Not only the backgrounds, but like the animations too. This just like felt really blocky. It was like, it 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 felt like a stand-in for what the actual animation was supposed to be. <laughs> like it was a pre yeah. pre pre pre-res visualization or something. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, and they probably do something like that in the animation department too, where they do, like, kind of like blockier versions of like what the final animation are, is going to be like. Who knows? Maybe it'll, it's the kind of. I'm kind of curious if like it'll be improved. Sometimes I've heard it happens a lot in the anime industry where they'll like rush it out to air and then they'll improve it for the Blu-ray release. Yeah, and what, what was that? What was that anime we watched a little bit of uh, that? Shiro, Shirobako. Yeah, this made me think of Shiro Baka <laughs> a lot, actually. <laughs> like, this behind the scenes of, like, thinking, like, oh, my God, something went wrong in, like, the animation uh, department. Like, you know, they ran out of money or, uh, you know, the animator got sick or some crap like that. Yeah, the, the, the line in between person uh, freaking ha had an issue or something or whatnot. We should totally finish that. Yeah, anime. well, we're going to have a big anime uh, hole in our lives until, you know, My, My Hero Academia comes back in, like, April. And I think maybe Attack on Titan comes back then, so who knows? Maybe we'll finish up an older series and we'll do, like, a compilation review of the entire thing. Oh, my God. Yeah, that would be, that'd be great. I want to see more Shiro Bako. That, that's a fantastic uh, little insider anime. It shows, like, behind the scenes of, like, how... You know, big studios produce like uh, an anime, and that's it's really fun. Really yeah, fun uh, it, it, it is a pretty great series. Of, like the first half, we saw about it, and it definitely felt like some Shirobako problems were happening towards the end of Inu Shiki. Yeah, but do, so what do you think of the fight though? When it goes to like automated combat, and they both like you know get the little okay. eye holes in their heads. That part, that part was really cool. I I love that. So it's like it's beyond like the battle of like you know conflicting personalities and then it, it just boils down to like machines against machines <laughs> and i love i love that because it's just um you know it's always about like 
the final confrontation is always about like you know one ego trying to outdo another ego but this is like it goes it goes beyond the ego it's just boils it down you know plain and simple just like strips the humanity of away <laughs> and like makes it into this like you know heart coldless cold heartless like machine versus machine battle where nothing else matters but the destruction of the other machine for the sake of the other machine's survival or whatever and th that was really uh it was really really fun to watch and so you liked it that you know, Yoshiki's machine was able to outwit Shishigami's machine by, you know, using the satellite tactic? Yeah. But it wasn't just, like, the tactics. It was just, like, the... Um, how did I... How do I want to put it? Just, um, like, they threw in this thing that was just, like, totally unexpected. Sorry, I'm trying to get... I'm trying to interview Yoshiki my lights on. <laughs> God damn it. Come on. You just have to open up your mech, inner mech, and... There, I know you shiki the mom. Perfect. Okay. So, so yeah. It's, it's just a, a really nice, pleasant surprise to, like, you know, traditional, like, final confrontations. And it was fun. It made it much more... Uh, enjoyable at that moment. So, so you definitely enjoyed it. So let's move on to the, the abrupt finale. Um, so w w what did you think of it, about it? Because like, I remember when I was reading the manga, even that felt really abrupt to me. But it, it, when I read it, the behind the scenes stories that the manga wasn't selling well and that he wanted to end it after, you know, you know the Gantz guy wanted to end it after 10 volumes, it sort of made sense that like, well, I guess that's the best way to wrap it up. Um, yeah, it's... You know, I honestly don't even know, like, how he would even continue the manga, like, in a, you know, in a reasonable way. Like, like how he, he can possibly, like, stretch the story on for so long. Like, I, I feel like, actually, there has to be, like, some sort of, like, conclusion to this story. Like, it has to end, like, quicker. Because the old guy can't just stand there and let... Shishigami do all this like bull crap to you know the rest of Japan and all of humanity or whatever like he can't just stand around like it's not like they they has there has to be a showdown at some point and like one of them is gonna get you know totally destroyed from this showdown so and, yeah, and then, there, there really weren't a lot of ways to like expand it outside of the Shishigami uh, you know uh, here, you know, uh, Shishigami and Yoshiki uh, showdown. That was sort of like the end point of the series. And unless they introduced more robot people or more aliens or whatnot, um, there, there really wasn't much else to go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I kind of wish, like, he kind of wrote the story uh, to fit, like, a much shorter arc. So he's, he, like... I really enjoyed a lot of the Shishigami moments of like him like shooting people through the internet cell phones and like just dropping down planes while like doing some kind of like weird orchestra stuff like um like what's his name from Hunter Hunter Oh um, like uh Crollo like Crollo from Hunter Hunter where Crollo's just like doing the orchestra thing while buildings are exploding and shit like that um but yeah, this is like it was a it was a fun short series, but yeah, the ending, like the whole asteroid thing, it kind of just felt like they threw that in there. Like, well, right they the did foreshadow night. it. They said there was an asteroid coming. They did kind of build it up a little bit. When earlier in the series, they said you know they had the news report saying an asteroid is coming towards Earth, uh, but it'll probably not hit us. When was that? Uh, throughout the the show, there are like news reports. It's just like I completely missed that. In, in one of our earlier reviews, I pointed it out. It's like ah, oh, foreshadowed a little bit better than uh, uh, you'll see, Greg. I totally missed that. It's just like one of those things in the background noise that just like completely whizzes by you. You know. 
But it is foreshadowed, so it's not entirely out of left field. Although that tr- appearance by Donald Trump sure is. Uh, that was that was amusing. Like how how uh, you know they interpreted Donald Trump in this anime, and how they you know uh, characterized him. It's just like we're all screwed, and you know, fuck this place. You know, I'll. <laughs> I'll see you all in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I lived a good so life. Stupid. Do whatever the hell you want. It doesn't matter to me. I, I'm a billionaire. <laughs> uh, so silly. <laughs> stupid. Um, Not as silly what? as that book, though. Have you heard about the book? Oh, Donald Trump's... <laughs> like the book they did on Donald Trump that's yeah. coming out? Yeah, the, the Fire and Fury. I... I'd like to hear more about that. I think uh, I think our friend Jimmy is actually uh, gonna. He pre-ordered it actually. Yeah, I ordered my copy yesterday. Hopefully, I'll get it soon. Uh, <laughs> you already pre-ordered. It too. Oh yeah, I read the excerpts. It's great. It's hilarious. Almost as good as seeing you know Donald in anime. Yeah, like how how accurate do you think these are though? Like. Ah, uh, I think given what we've seen and what we've heard, I think uh, I think it's pretty pretty accurate. Uh, I I can't wait to hear what people are say will say about it. Uh, you should look around. There, there's already like tons of stuff, and it, it's hilarious, and it's damning, and it's <laughs> terrifying all at the same time. Uh, just like Donald Trump and Inu Yashiki. Yeah, exactly, and that big asteroid. So when. When what do you Inuyashiki... think about Shishigami's redemption? Okay. It just felt... Okay, okay. Sorry, there's just a few things I want to... I want to, you know, address before getting to that. Like, okay. I, I mean, yes, his, I feel like his redemption was... A bit cliche. It's a bit too cliche. Because you know, you're building up this character, you know, doing all these horrible things. And, you know, Inushiki doesn't off him off, doesn't like kill him in this final confrontation. He just like disarms him, literally disarms him. And Shishigami is a sad panda <laughs> after that. He's like you know, he wants to hang out with his friend again to read manga. <laughs> like, after everything he's done, and he's like, and his friend is like, I can't forgive you. You know, even if you kill me, you know, um, I'm calling Inuyashiki to, to deal with you for good. And Shishigami's like, I just wanted to read manga with my best friend. I mean, <laughs> how could you? This, this motherfucker. He's like, after everything he's done, he's just like, He's just like all casual to his like besties, like like nothing happened. Like, well, well, just being darned made him nice and human esque again. So stupid. <laughs> like, I mean, part of Shishigami's character is like it's totally stupid, but like, it's very he's a very fun character to to watch. Um, but. Yeah, it it did feel like really. I, I think though those scenes are supposed to like try and make you kind of scared because like you don't really know what he's gonna do or what he's capable of. I guess maybe like it's portrayed a little bit better in the manga because like. Oh no no no! I mean yeah, this scene where he's reading the manga, with uh, his friend, um. That one, that scene didn't feel cliche at all. Really, just it just kind of felt a little too lighthearted. Um, yeah, I guess. Mm, I don't really have any strong feelings actually either way. But like, overall, though, you don't think he like really earned his redemption, or you thought it was like a little too convenient and easy. Yeah, like the whole asteroid thing. It just felt like a tool for Shishigami to get redeemed. Well, there, there was one really good scene in the manga I liked that they kind of cut out where um, 
you know, uh, while Shishigami, or not Shishigami, well, Inuyashiki's, like, fighting with the asteroid, he, like, asking the kid for advice, and he says, uh, why don't you do the thing in, uh, they did in Armageddon, and, like, dig a hole in, and then shoot it from there. And he tries, yeah. to, and he tries to do that, and then, of course, it doesn't work. <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, I like that scene a lot. It's sort of like, you know, what would an average person with superpowers try and do? They do the shit they see in movies. <laughs> Um, that uh, that I would I would like to uh, I would like to see in the in the show, but the the asteroid it, it just like I didn't really it didn't really sell me like everyone was talking about oh is the asteroid's gonna destroy us all like it just it didn't feel like it, with with like people discovering like these like amazing robots people like they didn't even think like oh let's send inuyashiki or shishigami to go up there and try and do something to them like after seeing like all the mayhem that you know inuyashiki and shishigami caused um i'm surprised you know humanity was so quick to like say oh this is hopeless or whatever. Well, they, they were not never like affiliated with the government institution. It was not like the president, you know, Donald Trump says, Inuyashiki, only you can stop it. Yeah. But I guess I you know. could say that like, in a way... Or it's, maybe, it's what about of, like uh, Inuyashiki's friend, Choco? Is that his name? Choco? I don't remember, but... Shock. Man, he, his name, he's so forgettable sometimes. I just remember his face. Um, but yeah, he he could have been like, you know, Inuyashiki, you may be the only one who can stop this asteroid. I mean, this is asking a lot for you, but... But don't you yeah. like it? You know, Inuyashiki just goes up at it alone to give it a try. You know, all the world's, you know, devastated. Nobody even cares to, like, try and find him because they think it's so hopeless. And, you know, he just goes up there, to, you know, just, just to try and do it. I mean, that that was kind of heroic, yeah. yeah. The pacing just feels a little bit too fast, I think. Uh, for, a little bit. For... You know, them introducing this asteroid's going to destroy the Earth. Because, like, you could point... argue that, like, you know, this is an alien space robot manga, but then we just get a disaster manga plot thrown in, and they're, like, two separate genres that don't really have anything to do with each other. Yeah, exactly. The... I mean, I almost like the idea on paper. I just think it could have been executed a little bit better somehow it's hard i think there could have been a better transition from like you know shishigami threat to like asteroid threat mm -hmm. so let's get into the scores what would you rate episode 10 um episode 10 episode 10 wasn't the last one right it was the battle it was the battle one the battle one um that that last bit of the fight, I think, um, made it better after the crap CGI part. Um, the crap CGI part was a very glaring mistake. And also the music choice for the airplane landing stuff. Um, uh, There's some nice little emotional highs and lows with, like, uh, Inuyashiki saving his daughter, like you kind of get a little bit of the feels for that. Um, it was a, it was a seven point five for me. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Seven point five. Um, I thought there was some great material in it, and I don't think it was executed to its fullest degree, which was mm -hmm. disappointing because that that should have been like the penultimate, you know, the big final fight we've been waiting to see. You know, Yushiki saving his daughter. You know, Yushiki saving people from planes, as opposed to like Goofy Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, the CGI thing that that really that really lowered my score. I think just like 
and, and most of the other parts of this episode is executed really well. It's just mm. I can hear mm. that. Well, what is the thing you're playing with? I can hear it. Oh, this metal. It's teaching. really loud. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Hopefully, it doesn't bug people in the video. My bad. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I feel about episode ten. And then episode eleven. Um, Shishigami's sacrifice just felt a little bit too cliche. A little bit like the asteroid was basically a tool to redeem him. And I mean, I like that I, they also sacrificed Inuyashiki with the asteroid too, because he's like, oh, you know, I knew I was destined to do something in my life. And Shishigami's sacrifice wasn't enough. And apparently even the good guys, you know, who did everything right, still has to sacrifice himself at the end. And, you know, that was, you know, that was kind of a, a little bittersweet moment. I just this, ex, this episode wasn't the best, though. I think it's it was like, stronger than the other one, though. I thought there were more, you know, feels, you know, when he sacrifices himself and then they play the end song over the epilogue. I don't know. I and Donald Trump English. It just it was all out of like the context of the rest of the series, though, because like all of a sudden they're dealing with this asteroid, which pretty much came out of nowhere from my my perspective, and it's just really it felt really sloppy to just like throw this in there all of a sudden. I. I had to give us a six that, oh. that last episode. Oh, I, I was going to give it an eight. I, I thought, really? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Um, I thought it resolved things not perfectly, but as best as you could, you know, within the limitations of the manga. And, you know, got enough, like, you know, sentimental moments where they have, like, the epilogue where the family finally appreciates him. The little boy learns to fight against school bullies, and the girl draws her manga. She gets Does published. The boy, in... the boy fights against the school bullies. How? There's this Doesn't one, he, like, there's isn't this... he laying on the ground? Yeah, like, that's the whole point that he like fought back against them. Oh. It's elaborated a little bit more in the manga where there's more room to breathe, but they show him like fighting, you know, punching the school bullies who try to take his lunch money. Oh, oh. So, hmm. And the idea is that he was inspired by the heroics of his father. Mm. Yeah, this Inuyashiki's whole family just feels doesn't feel like very appreciated. Never felt very appreciative of of him in the first place, and now all of a sudden they care about him. I I feel like his family is like somewhat. Like, they're all like really narcissistic. Yeah, they are kind of all assholes. Yeah, I I don't I didn't really like feel that much for his family that much, except maybe the daughter because like <coughs> at least she gets the most she, like sort of development, even though it's not much. Yeah, like wanting to do the manga thing, you know, you could see why she's like so focused on her own life and not anything to do with her dad and like at least that you could sort of understand but you know the wife and uh, the son to i'm not feeling i wasn't feeling it i wasn't feeling in yushiki's family i didn't really feel anything for them mm. interesting all right. So overall, though, what do you think of the series? Um, uh, the ending, the ending is not what I wanted. I was I was a bit disappointed. I I thought it was fun for the most part, like in the beginning and stuff, but just like this. This ending had to be, I think, really good. 
It wasn't. It wasn't good for me. What do you think would have been a better ending, though? Well, here, here's an interesting question. I don't even know. No idea. I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Shishigami kills one of um, Inuyashiki's family members, and Inuyashiki loses it. He, you know, goes on. He goes on a, a darker path than what he initially started off as, you know, just like the Good Samaritan. And I think that could have led to a more interesting final battle between him and uh, Shishigami. And he's like just sort of berserk mode or whatnot. Yeah, and he doesn't care which casualties he's inflicting upon, you know, uh, helpless people at that point. And maybe... uh, yeah, and from there, I think something like that. Would have made for a more satisfying climax. Yeah. I mean, I do like the machine-on-machine kind of, like, autopilot mode, too. Um, I think that could have been, like, part of the battle. I don't think that should have been... Maybe that shouldn't have been, like... The end? Well, then again... No, I really like the machine on machine battle at the end. That uh, that I really like, but maybe like earlier, this like, you know, Inushiki going full rage mode earlier, mm. and then and then they go on autopilot mode. And that somehow triggers autopilot, and Inushiki's autopilot is stronger because he's just so angry. No, it, I don't even think it should be that. It should be like, um exactly like how it plays out in the anime where it's like autopilot doesn't like give a fuck about whose ego is what you know it's just like machine versus machine kind of thing and nothing else really matters at that point (laughs) no no like human like ego attached to it interesting all right so i think that finishes up um all of our thoughts on the Inuyashiki climax or anti-climax. Um, you know, for me, I'm just happy to see the series turn into uh, anime, so I, I was very excited to see it uh, since I followed the manga from its inception. And I'm always, mm. like, here to see what the Gantz guy will do next. And I think this was definitely a nice little departure from his, like, usual stuff. And uh, mm. it's a nice little departure from most uh, anime and uh, whatnot. Um, I, I hope he, like, continues making series like these. Like, I don't want him to, like, quit or anything, just because this wasn't like his best work, but yeah, I think I think he can do better stuff than this. To be honest, I think he's got more potential. Well, here, here's a big question: What do you like better, this or Gantz? I like Gantz better. Ah, oh. I I really do like Gantz better. This is uh, it had a lot of interesting ideas. It didn't feel like a complete series for me. Yeah, that, that that's fair enough. You could definitely say it was like kind of like ended before you know if there were more ideas to introduce, um, you know they were never quite explained. Yeah, well, Gantz did have a lot of dumb shit. Like you remember the vampires that were introduced and then never explained. I love the vampires. <laughs> I I still love them to this day. This is like so you know badass. They they just were never explained, never given an introduction how they I fit don't into even it. Care. <laughs> I don't even care. You know, you just have to throw in, like, random badass vampires <laughs> in, in suits, like, in the Gantz universe. Like, you know, they're, they're a whole, they're, their whole organization is against, you know, Gantz in general for some weird, mysterious <laughs> reason. And then they're caught up in this, like, they're actually caught up in the Gantz game as well and have to fight the aliens and have the exploding thing chip in their brains, too. This is this fun. <laughs> Is they they're fun. I had fun with those vampires. As long as they were fun. And then the final goat aliens. Okay, that that was less fun. The goat aliens That shit took forever to resolve. Yeah. Man, I did not I did not appreciate the final arc of Gantz that much, but 
the arcs prior to that uh really fun like even like where they're fighting against all the art oh, so uh, all the art all the renaissance artists yeah all the renaissance art uh that that was really fun really fun to watch um yeah but that, that and the ending for Gantz was quite strange i think almost like maybe as strange as like maybe on par with like Inuyashiki's strange kind of weird ending it didn't feel like an ending sometimes it felt more conclusive than Inuyashiki's. I guess it did, yeah. They kind of gave you a weird explanation for everything. And, um, you know, I like that scene with, like, the, the god alien. I didn't even think they needed to give that an explanation for Gantz. Like, Gantz didn't really need explaining. You just kind of thrown in there. I, I think, you know, the sheer mystery of, like, what the hell Gantz was was, like, a very attractive thing about the series and you know being thrown against the aliens like maybe there could have been like an explanation for like what the ultimate purpose of what Gantz was trying to do but we I don't think we needed an explanation of what the hell Gantz was it's an interesting proposition all right well let us know in the comments do you enjoy the end did you hate it um do, have you seen gantz did you like the ending of the gantz manga or do you only seen the uh you know horrible anime only adaptation i love reading your comments Goro reads yep. those comments i we always too. appreciate them there was actually a really interesting one about dr stone I'll, I'll tell you in a minute about that one. Oh, i'd love to see it um but uh thank you for hanging out with us and uh, remember lobsters and tennis but don't you grab it do you like Lowe's but hate shopping? Then t Blocks is the subscription service for you. But I know what you're thinking. But Lobster, how is that any different than Loot Crate or the other subscription services? Well, t Blocks sends you t-shirts, which is clothing, which is actually useful, unlike the useless swag junk that Loot Crate keeps peddling on gullible schmucks. And this isn't just knockoff brand crap. t Blocks hooks you up with licensed shirts for all the stuff you love, because you need clothes. How else are you going to keep your puny human man flesh protected from the elements? T-shirts are useful for any occasion. Wear them. Give them to friends. Give them to enemies. Knit them together. Make a quilt. T-shirts are life. And you know the best part? It'll only cost you $6.99. That's right. You can get 12 shirts sent to you for once a month for only $6.99. And you know what? If ultra-cheap licensed goods are too basic for you, then there's also the Community t Block set, which features original designs from the best up-and-coming artists, so you can keep that hipster street cred. But I'm here to save you even more money! Use the code LOBSTERTBX at checkout and you'll save 10% on any order. Be a t-shirt wearing God amongst mortals. Use the power of the most expensive seafood to get you the cheapest t-shirts now!